Hello and welcome to the Alcombe Weald Residents Forum. My name's Natalie and I'm Community Development here at Alcombe Weald. The forums are hosted quarterly by Urban and Civic, the master developer for Alcombe Weald, and are an opportunity to find out the latest news across the development, updates on key development milestones and an opportunity to ask questions as well as address issues. The next community event we've got coming up is the Scarecrow Festival. This has been run by the Community Association, um, especially the Wilkinson family, and thank you very much to them. So straw's already been handed out. Um, the straw and scarecrows have already started appearing. I saw a minion and growl um, yesterday, so I'm very excited by that. And then prize giving will be on the 1st of October at 5 p.m. on the school plaza. On Saturday, we've got um, the outdoor cinema, uh, Spider-Man No Way Home and tickets are still available for that. The walking group continues to grow and expand so they meet every, every Monday at 12.30 at Swinford Stores. There is now an evening group. Now the times um, of that are changing. It's tending to be on a Thursday at about 7pm um, but they are changing that slightly depending on who's available so best to keep an eye on Facebook for that one. In October, we've got a wild wheeled event. So we'll have pond dipping, um, a hedgehog highways of activity, and then bat spotting. We're doing this with the Wildlife Trust and tickets are available on Eventbrite if by searching Alcombe Weald. Uh, we will be naming Woodland Block D. Now Woodland Block D is a section of parkland off Senlis Road and by the new Red Row section. And we need some names for that. Um, we've got a community tree planting event on the 26th of November. Um, with 70 fruit trees that need to be planted and they'll be part of the Jubilee canopy. So we're thinking maybe we'll go and given recent events, maybe we'll go for a Jubilee or a Queen theme. Please email me if you've got any ideas of what you might like to call that and we'll announce them just before um, the tree planting activity. The actual park will, um, we haven't got a date for the opening of the park yet. Um, we're looking probably at the new year for the actual opening. Um, as I'm sure many of you have noticed, the green spaces are looking a little bit on the parched side. Um, now the um, rainy season is here with us, now we've got rains again. Um, we'll, Whitings are doing a survey of what has, what has gone properly and, and what, what can be recovered. And they're looking into that for me at the moment. So we'll, and then they'll start looking at recovery. Uh, this is quite a long process, so don't expect to see things being replaced immediately. They'll want to make sure that things are definitely gone before um, they start replacing. The youth group is going from strength to strength. Um, it's been an amazing community effort, especially by um, Charlotte, who has been spearheading this. Uh, they started as do only once a month on the second Friday of the month, and they're now looking to expand that to the second and the fourth Friday of the month. Uh, key stage two is from 6 till 7.15. And then key stage three is from 7.30 to 8.30 of a Friday evening. Um, they do need volunteers, so if it's something that you'd be interested in helping with, um, please get in touch. And obviously, if you've got children of that age, then um, they'd love to see you. Sawtree and Alcombe Wheel Cricket Club um, are now fully established at Alcombe Wheel. We've had junior games this year. They're working, they've worked very hard on the pitch, especially given the drought. Um, uh, to get adults games for next year. I've just had a pitch report that says that there probably will be adult games next year. Um, please respect the area um, and keep dogs um, and bicycles off the square. It does help enormously in getting the pitch ready. The second Friday of every month is library day. So we have rhyme time for to so toddler singing at 10 a.m. and then um, the coffee club at 11 a.m. All welcome to that. If you would like to volunteer for that again, we do need volunteers for that. So please c c get in contact with me. The library is open every day from nine to five, uh, Monday to Friday. And now I'm gonna pass over to Rachel who's going to do the development update. Hello, my name is Rachel Arnold and I work for the Alconbury Wheels Communications and Communities team, supporting Natalie in her community's work at Alconbury Wheels. I'm going to start with an update on phase one. Phase one of Alconbury Wheels is progressing well and the coloured areas on this map indicate the housing parcels um, within phase one. So starting with section C in red, Campbell, Buchanan, George have begun work in delivering 62 new homes and their marketing suite is due to open later this month. So that's the parcel at the front of uh, the development along Ermine Street and on the corner of the boulevard. In section H in green, 260 units were due to be brought forward by Carla Homes, but they have now withdrawn. So we are working with another house builder who is keen uh, to come on board. 
We hope to be able to confirm that in the coming weeks and we are working with that particular house builder on other sites um, and there is lots of demand for that area and that parcel so things should move forward quite quickly with the new house builder. In section J, which is the turquoise colour, Red Row are expanding across Senlis Road to deliver a further 245 homes um, and their show homes are now open in that area. And section K in orange, Morris are delivering a further 206 homes in the area north of their current parcel. Section G, which is the smaller green parcel, is being delivered slightly differently to other parcels. So that parcel will be a build to rent area of homes and that's about bringing forward some diversity of house tenures on the development. So given the cost of living and economic challenges, the homes will provide options for people not in the position to buy right now or for those who just want to rent with a greater certainty and in a nice new property on a new development where they can settle and make their home. The homes will be market level rented and we are working with Lovells to uh, deliver the homes and we'll also be appointing a partner to come on board as the development progresses to market the homes and also provide ongoing support and maintenance for tenants. The first section of Garland Park opened in 2020 and it runs from Ermine Street Academy to the northern boundary of Hopkins Homes. And phase two is now partly open, uh, whilst we're doing some finishing touches to install some temporary bollards, whilst we're awaiting the timber bollards, which will be the permanent feature. And that is to deter people from driving onto the path area um, connecting to the park. So the southern half of the park is now open and the northern half will be open by early to mid-October. And we are exploring some ideas for tree planting in this area, um, which Natalie mentioned earlier, and she will be in touch once that's in place. Phase three of Garland Park will be in the final section, um, completing the connection up to the local centre, the Glade, which is coming forward as well. And for those who are keen to, to know when Senlis Road will be opening, as you know, currently half of Senlis Road is open and we are awaiting um, a highways inspection before we can open the second part of the road. But not long now, and we're hoping to update you as soon as we can. Hopefully many of you will have had a chance to explore the walking route which links Alcombe Weald to Presley Wood Ancient Monument. It also connects to existing public rights of way in the Stukeleys and Abbots Ripton. Presley Wood is an ancient monument which will form part of the future country park at Alcombe Weald. And we have um, planning consent for tree planting and landscaping along the route, um, which will begin to, live, to deliver in the tree planting season this winter. In the meantime, please do take care with dogs along the route um, and benches for seating along the route have been ordered and the uh, dog bins have been installed just this week. As many of you will know, we were granted planning consent for the Glade Local Centre in 2021. With prices of building materials increasing, agreeing costs for the project has been really challenging, and so it took longer than expected to agree this with the co-op and the contractors. But we're now really pleased to say that this is resolved and preparation work has started on site to deliver the co-op convenience store first, alongside the public square and future retail units, which will come shortly after. So following construction and fit out, we anticipate the co-op to open its doors in mid 2023. And we are working with co-op on various community initiatives and local recruitment plans to get them involved with the community before they open their doors. And the Glade area will also include a public square, which will enable pop-up events and markets. And it will have new areas of landscaping and open green space to allow for additional community activities. At the heart of the next stage of development at Alconbury Wields, we'll be bringing forward a secondary school and a special education needs school. Phase one of the education campus will include a new secondary school giving ESCA pupils a continuation of their education uh, and also welcome pupils from other primary schools in the area. Phase one of the education campus will also see the special education needs school come forward and this will be a 150 pupil school for those with educational needs and disabilities. The campus's future plans also includes a sixth form college and land has been set aside for future expansion if needed. Morgan Sindel have been appointed as the main contractors and we are working towards a 2024 opening for both the secondary school and the special education needs school. Phase two of Alconbury Weald will consist of the country park, more homes, a second primary school, as well as sports pitches and a community hub. Phase two is moving forward and we are hoping to have secured consent for the next phase of homes later this year. In the meantime, the focus is on archaeology, which will enable the road connection to be put in place. And the road will also have bus and cycle connections, which come out directly onto the A141. 
The consent for the road is already covered in the outline application for Alconbury Wheels, so we can progress this to be ready alongside homes coming forward. Oxford Archaeology East will be looking to work with the community and school as they take forward digs in key er areas of phase two. And we have Clemency from Oxford Archaeology East here with us today to give an update on the work so far. In December last year, we invited the community to give their thoughts on the future of key phase three at Alconbury Weald. We held some consultation events and we're really grateful for the feedback provided uh, from those who came along. And the next stage of planning is going in this side of Christmas. So we're working through timings with the team currently to ensure we can update residents and also to set out a detailed next steps on planning for the future of the town centre and facilities that we know people want more information on, like the health centre, the next community centre and transport connections, which we'll want to do some workshops on to ensure the community can shape those coming forward. Phases two and three of Alconbury Wheels will be delivered in tandem, so as we move forward with the planning applications, we'll be able to give more details on timings as that progresses. Within the plans for phase three uh, is the transport hub, and land is set aside for a train station in phase three. And we continue to work with the combined authority and network rail on when a train station is likely to come forward at Alconbury Wheels. Grange Farm within phase two of Alconbury Weald is surrounded by numerous archaeological sites and we're really pleased to invite Clemency here today to give an update on the work so far at Grange Farm. Hello, my name is Clem Cooper and I'm the Community Archaeology Manager for Oxford Archaeology. Oxford Archaeology is one of the country's leading archaeological contractors undertaking investigations ahead of development. Our East Office is based at Bar Hill in Cambridgeshire and we've been undertaking archaeological investigations in and around Alconbury Weald for over 20 years. Our next investigation is going to take place ahead of Phase 2 near Grange Farm. We're going to be excavating a mid to late Iron Age settlement ahead of the installation of a new access road. This work starts imminently and will continue until Christmas 2022. Before this excavation, we've done a lot of work to uh, investigate the archaeology of this area. We've done a desk-based assessment to understand what is already known about the archaeology of this area. We've then undertaken a geophysical survey to uh, see whether there are any underlying archaeological remains that that can identify. And then we've done some trial trenching to see whether the results of the geophysical survey are borne out on the ground. This helped us to target uh, the area of our open excavation. We'll be using machinery to remove the topsoil and the subsoil and to reveal the underlying archaeological uh, features. These will be dug out by hand. We'll be recovering artefacts and recording the features as we go. Our work is monitored by Cambridgeshire County Council's Historic Environment Team. They come and visit our site on a weekly basis and check that um, we are undertaking the archaeological excavation to the highest standards. They will sign off the condition for planning only if they are satisfied with the work that we have done. After the excavation, there is a lot of further work to analyse the findings. We begin by quantifying all of the artefacts that have been recovered. So whether that's uh, ceramic pottery, whether that's um, stone or bone, everything is weighed and catalogued and sent to specialists for analysis. Once we've got those specialist reports, then we start to draw those together and we'll publish the findings. Once the findings are published, and that can take several years of uh, further work, they will be archived. The Archaeological Repository for Archaeological Archives in Cambridgeshire is the County Council. So everything that has been recovered so far from Alconbury Weald will be um, deposited with the County Council and available for public access and for research in the future. We're delighted to be back at Alconbury Weald and working with Urban and Civic again. We have been working on several of their other sites in Cambridgeshire, including Waterbeach Barracks, Wintringham and Hinkston. Thank you, Clem, and hopefully we'll hear more from you in the future on archaeology at Alconbury Weald. 
The new bus service for Alconbury Weald launched in January this year and connects the development to Alconbury Western, Alconbury Village, the Stukeleys and Huntingdon. Buses from the boulevard take less than 15 minutes to the train station in Huntingdon and you can plan a journey using the My Trip app which also has a live bus tracking facility as well. And lastly from me, there are various ways to stay up to date with what's going on at Alconbury Wheels. There is an active Facebook group called Alconbury Wheeled Living, which is a great way to stay up to date with updates from residents and those of us in the Alconbury Wheeled team, alongside the monthly newsletter The Warbler and the quarterly publication Make News. The Alconbury Wheeled website is also a great way to stay up to date with events and planning, as well as our social media accounts as well. Thank you so much for taking the time to catch up at this residence forum. We'll be hosting the next one on the 6th of December. But in the meantime, if you have any questions or would like to know more about Alconbury Wheels, please do get in touch with either myself or Natalie.